Hi everyone, today in this video, I will be talking about how to use the SQL Server image in your Docker for your local development. Also, there is one more tool that has been introduced recently and it is an extension for the VS Code. So remember, we always use the SQL Server Management Studio to work with the SQL Server database for your local system or for Azure database. But now we have an extension in VS Code and that can help you to connect to your database and you will get a proper UI over there. So we will learn all these basic concepts in this video. Let's understand everything one by one. So first of all, I will be talking about how to work with the SQL Server image in your Docker system. Make sure you have already installed this Docker desktop in your local system before starting this video. So to install this Docker system, you can simply open your browser and search for the Docker desktop. You will get this proper page this one click on this docker desktop and here you can download it based on your operating system if you are using linux mac os or windows based on that you can download it from this place so i have already installed this docker system in my laptop and here it is after installing this is how it will look like now we have to pull one image of sql server and how to do that so basically there are some commands for the docker and again you don't have to remember these commands let's open this browser and search for that command so here I'm writing SQL server image for docker and you will get a link which is this hub.docker.com. So let's open this link in a new tab and here you will get the proper information about all these images. So here you will notice that this is an verified image. So it is coming from Microsoft here you can see and this is the command that we can use to download this image in your system. So it means we don't have to install the SQL Server as a separate software. We can just pull this image. We can work on that image in our development. So this is the Docker desktop that I'm using. And we have to open our terminal window. You can use command prompt. You can use terminal or any other command line tool which you have installed in your system. You can use that. But I have noticed that this Docker desktop is also having this terminal view over here. Let's click on this one and we will get one terminal window at this place. So you can use any one of them. And remember, we have copied one command from that browser. So let's just copy, paste it over here. Docker pull ncr microsoft.com ms sql server. So we are just pulling one image of this ms sql server from this place. Let's hit the enter button. And this will take some time. So based on your internet speed, because it has some size. So this will take few minutes actually. Let's wait for that. At this place, you can notice that the image has been downloaded successfully. So if I just close this window and you will notice that we are having this image. Now we have to run that image. And once you will run that image, then you will get something called container. As of now, you can assume it that you have downloaded the SQL Server files in your system, but you have not installed that, right? Once you will install that, then only you will be able to connect to that instance. Similar thing is also applicable over here. We have only downloaded the image, but it is not running. To run it, we have to again use some commands and once we will run it, then it will be visible under containers. And here is the container. If I click on this containers, then you will notice as of now, we do not have anything over here, right? After running this image, you will notice that there will be one instance of that image over here under these containers. Let's do that. And to run that again, we have to use one more command. So let's open this terminal window one more time. And to run the instance of this image, we have to run this particular command. And the command is docker run e, accept eula and user license agreement. And this is the password that I'm setting for this instance. It is going to be admin at the one, two, three. Then we have this port mapping, then the name of the image. And then this is the volume where we are going to store this particular data. And this is basically image details. Now let's click on this enter button and see what will happen. At this place, you can notice that this is running successfully. If I go to the containers and over here, you can notice that we are having one instance. Let's just close it. Here you can notice that we are having this instance and this is the instance of the SQL Server. Now we have to connect to this SQL Server and there are few ways to connect to the SQL Server. Either you can use that traditional way, which is the SQL Server Management Studio, or if you are using any other tool, you can also use that. Now, here in this video, I will be using some new tool. And this is a new extension that has been added for the VS Code. So let's open this VS Code. VS Code is Visual Studio Code. And over here, I have installed one extension. And this extension name is, if I go over here and scroll down a little bit, and this is an official Microsoft extension, so you can use it without any problem. And yeah, 
once you will install it then on the left hand side you will see this menu here you can just connect to your database now to make this connection you have to click over here on this add connection or you can click on this plus button also let's click on this one and you will get a proper window to connect to your sql server here you have to provide a name of your profile so it means from this extension you can connect to more than one databases and for each connection you have to provide a name over here so for example in my case i am working with the local sql server which is running on docker so i can give any meaningful name maybe local sql server like this or you can give any meaningful name now here we have to provide a way how to connect to that database one is this parameters second is the connection string and third is this azure first let's try to go with this parameters because we are working with the local system you can also provide the connection string directly over here and you will get a connection but let's understand everything from the scratch with all the parameters one by one what is the server name the server name is localhost because it is running on our local system trust server certificate yes now we have to choose the authentication type so because we are using the sql login over here so we have to provide that details and it is sa and remember the password was admin at the rate one two three so if i just click on this one then you will notice you are having this button admin at the rate one two three if you want to save this password then you can click on the checkbox yes now it will save this password and if you want to connect to any specific database then you can enter the name of your database over here otherwise click on this connect button so let's click on this connect button and this will making an connection here on the left hand side you can notice that we are having something similar that we used to have in the sql server management studio now to connect to this database we want to run few queries how to do that so here on this left hand side the bottom side you will notice we are having query history but this query history will be created once we will run some queries so how to run those queries so for that let's get a new file over here i'm pressing only the control n and this is just a very basic new file okay now we have to change the type of this file from this plain text to, to the sql file let's click over here and search the sql so i'm using this first one sql once you will change this extension then immediately on the upper hand side you will notice we are having few more options over here okay so this is for the connection you can make the connection of this file to your databases so here let's click on this connection and we are going to connect to our database so here you can notice that you will get a list of all the profiles that you are having right now we are having only one profile which is local sql server so i'm using that one click on this one and this time you can notice that the connection has been created successfully okay now if i want to create a new database over here then i have to run few queries create database and let's give any meaningful name employee db after writing this query you can run it and to run it you can simply click on this button or you can simply use Control shift e to execute this query let's click on this one and here you can notice that this query has been executed successfully and this is the total execution time and even on the left hand side you will notice you are having a history of the query now if i just refresh the changes over here at this place then you will notice we are having one more database this is employee tp let's collapse this one and and expand this employee db here you will notice we do not have anything in the tables as of now okay now we have to work on the tables so first of all let's use one more command which is employee db it means i want to work with this database now there are few things if you have noticed over here we are getting the intelligence also and which is a very good thing so if i want to create one table over here so i am using this very basic query to create a very simple employee table over here there are four columns in this query employee id first name last name and the address let's just execute it and refresh the tables over here you will notice that we are having this employee.dbo if as of now i want to run this select query s e l e c t and this is employee dot and this is employee execute this command you will notice you are having the result over here and because there is no data that is why this table is empty let's just insert few items over here and if i insert this data then this time you will notice that this query is successful now let's just remove all of them and try to run this select command let's try to execute it and this time you will notice that we will have some data in our database and here you can see we are having all the results and this is how we can connect to our sql server database which is running as a container in our docker system 
And because we are having a proper connection string and the details are that the server name is the local host and you are having this username, the password, the port, the database name. So you can form a new connection string and you can use that connection string in your .NET application to connect to this database. So make sure to try to connect to this database by using your .NET application and let me know your feedback in the comment section below if you are able to make the connection to this database or you are facing any problem. If you are having any questions then feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.